So this is something that every pilot has to learn to do in their training. Today we're going to talk about stalls. Well, let's start off with what is a stall. A stall is when you exceed the critical angle of attack. Now, we kind of have to go back a little bit uh, to define critical angle of attack, or even what angle of attack is. We don't want to get in depth too much with that today, but essentially what it's going to be is we have airflow over the wing. So if this is my wing here and this is my airflow, I've got that air moving over the top of the wing and underneath the wing, and that creates lift. Now, the angle of attack is going to be the difference between the cord of the wing and the relative wing. Wind. So this will be where the air is moving in respect to this lengthwise span here of the wing or the cord. So if this is the cross section of the wing, if I take a slice out of this sport cruiser wing here beside me and I'm looking down from the end of this wing down in towards the middle, that is going to be the cord. And so when I have the wing moving through the air and the air is coming from here, and then I tip up the wing, now that angle has changed, right? And so if I'm just looking at the wing as this hand and the air as this hand, I've got maybe a 30 degree angle of incidence there, or an angle of attack, and that is what's going to cause my wing to stall if I exceed that. So the critical angle of attack is when the wing stops making lift, right? And that's what a stall is. So I can do that at any airspeed, I can do that at any altitude, and that's what makes it dangerous. So we think a lot about stalls being at a certain airspeed, and that's the case if the aircraft is configured correctly but it can happen you know maybe if I'm in a, a banking turn right we call that an accelerated stall there's all kinds of stalls that we learned about in CFI that are cross-controlled stalls that are uh, elevator trim power on power off of course for the folks uh, in private and commercial right and so all of these things are the wing exceeding the critical angle of attack there's also some debate on what we classify as a full stall, and that's really more for the private pilot ACS or the airman certification standards is, well, when do I have to recover from this stall? And that's when it is a full stall as opposed to the commercial ACS, the commercial standards for a check ride. That's the first indication of a stall. So a full stall, the FAA defines it when they're talking about in their upset and recovery training. Um, it's when it exceeds, again, the critical angle of attack and uh, that's normally accompanied by an uncommanded nose drop that cannot be easily arrested and or a rolling motion with that. So you get a nose drop and a wing drop and that's what tells you that you have exceeded that critical angle of attack. And the reason we say that is there are some airplanes that really just don't stall very well. They, they maybe just sink and then you have the other ones that just really break pretty nastily when they do exceed those critical angle of attacks. And so if there's any sort of uncommanded nose drop, that would be a full stall. That would be acceptable for a private pilot check ride. You don't want to recover immediately at the stall horn for a private pilot because that's not taking it to a full stall. Now that might vary um, across the country, but again, that's what we have in writing. So that's what we're going to use here at Thrust to define of when we're at a full stall just versus uh, when we're at the first indication. Some other warning signs that we can get aside from, you know, being at the full stall at that point, we're already stalled. We're already past the critical angle of attack. That's bad. We don't ever want to get to that in uh, anywhere outside of training. And so what we need to do is recognize the symptoms of an impending stall. And there's a couple that we want to talk about today. The first is going to be buffeting. And essentially what that is, is if you can imagine a kind of a rock skipping across the surface, if the, the plane is flying smoothly, the air is going to be smooth, turbulence notwithstanding, because the air under the wing is going to create essentially the same amount of lift. When we're getting closer to a stall, that lift is being disrupted as it gets more and more stalled over the wing. And so we're feeling this kind of bumping, or again, I called it buffeting, that's kind of a vibration of the aircraft. You'll feel it in your lower back, you'll feel it in the seat. And that's the airplane essentially skipping across the surface of the pond or across the surface of the air, the lift, because it's being disrupted, that lift across the wing is being disrupted as we're getting close to a complete and total disruption of lift or loss of lift. Another indication of an impending stall is obviously gonna be any stall warning systems in the aircraft. And that's going to be something like a stall horn or a stall reed, those kind of things. Uh, in the archers, we have a, uh, a stall horn that's a, an aural warning. It's got a little lift tab that uh, when that lift gets disrupted, that vacuum kind of sucks it upward and it creates an electrical impulse that is sent to the cockpit and we get a stall, stall, stall enunciation to us uh, that lets us know that we're getting close. And some of the larger airplanes, you'll get a stick shaker when you're getting close. You'll get a stick pusher if you are stalled. And those again are just uh, electrical augmentations to the airplane that it makes it harder for you to actually get stalled because that 
especially in a larger airplane, would be very, very bad. They do not have very docile stalling tendencies. Another thing that we can look for in impending stall is control mushiness. So as we're slowing down, especially let's say in just a power off stall, we're not talking accelerated or anything like that, but um, again, we're talking about angle of attack. And as we have a greater angle of attack, as we get closer to that critical angle of attack, the wind moving over the control surfaces is going to be less. It's going to be less effective. We can't deflect that wind in the proper direction that we need to. So I'm going to end up having to do more control input from one direction or another as we get closer, as we get into slow flight, as we get into those stalled scenarios. And so what you'll feel is all of a sudden, man, it feels like you're, you're moving the yoke all over the place and it's not doing anything. And that's how you know you're getting close as well. So now that we've given a very brief overview on what causes a stall and how do we avoid it, right? How do we not get into it in the first place? Let's talk about how to recover. In private pilot especially, it's kind of hard to visualize maybe or get it through your head when you're first learning stalls that we don't want you to be good at stalling an airplane. We are not trying to teach you this stuff so that you're good at stalling an airplane. We want you to get good at setting up and pulling that power back and lifting the nose and maintaining your directional control so that you're good at getting out of a stall. And that's what we're gonna talk about here briefly. So again, there's all kinds of stalls, right, that we talked about at the beginning of this video but the recovery stays for the most part the same. The first thing we have to do is break that angle of attack. As I said earlier, the way we stall in the first place is by exceeding that critical angle of attack. So in order to break it, we have to do, we have to get out of it. We have to put that wing back into the relative wind so that it starts flying again. And depending on that stall configuration will depend on exactly how we do that, but I'll give you a couple of examples. So in a power off stall, we're gonna break that um, angle of attack by lowering the nose, and we're also going to break that angle of attack by adding power, and we need to do both of those things, but I'm always going to do um, you know, pitch power trim. So if I am stalling because the relative wind is going to go um, against the cord line here, right? And I immediately add power. Really, all that's gonna do, it'll shift the relative wind up a little bit, but it's gonna kinda drag me up. So I've gotta push that nose over first and then add power. Now, in reality, you're gonna be pretty much doing both at the same time, but if I were to just add power without pushing that nose over, now I've gotten into a power on stall scenario and I don't wanna do that either. So I've gotta break the angle of attack. I've gotta give myself full power if I don't already, and then it's start to try and to clean up that airplane. So push the nose over, increase power, and now I've start gotting that I've got that air moving uh, back over the wings again and now I can start maybe pulling away from the ground a little bit I'm gonna get that first notch of flaps out I'm gonna get that second notch of flaps out as I get more airspeed maybe about VX and then again VY more flaps out and I can start climbing so on recovery from the stall it is important that you keep climbing after that so again from the beginning to start we've got to break that angle of attack then we have to add power then we can start cleaning up the airplane and somewhere in there I've got to start going away from the ground as well. I don't want to keep sinking, right? It's not all about airspeed at that moment. I've got to get away from the ground, but I can't do it too much or I'll stall back. So generally, if I'm thinking of um, a power off stall scenario, I'm going to push that nose over. I'm going to increase power all the way so I get air moving back over those wings, maybe get a 50 foot a minute climb, maybe just hold altitude if that's all I've got. But as long as I see my airspeed increasing, that's what I want. I'm going to immediately put that flaps down to in the arch it'll be about 25 degrees uh, flaps there, which will be our flaps two, our second notch of flaps, so that I can get some more air moving over that wing uh, and get us sped up just a little bit. I'm gonna hit VX, I'm gonna dump on the next notch of flaps, and then I'm gonna go VY and put the flaps all the way in. And like I said, I don't wanna just be going level. There might be trees or something if I'm stalling low to the ground. I do want to go away from the ground, but it's important that I break the angle of attack first, then add power, then start cleaning up the airplane. All right, everybody, so that wraps it up today on your 10,000 foot overview of stalls and uh, some symptoms of an impending stall, and most importantly, how do we get out of one? If you have any comments or you think we could have explained it a little bit better, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.